Hey lovelies, my name is Charlotte and welcome to my YouTube channel, Michael Goes Knitting. I am a 23 year old knitter from the UK. Um, I've been knitting for about 10 years now, so hopefully I can impart some of my knowledge and wisdom onto you guys. Um, this video series is going to be a comprehensive beginner's guide to knitting, so hopefully if you've got no experience from knitting, you can follow these videos and then you can learn with me. Um, when I learnt to knit I used a lot of YouTube videos but I always found that none of them really had everything I wanted, everything that I needed from a YouTube video. I, there would be some how to cast on and then do the knit stitch and some just how to do the purl stitch and you'd have to jump through so many different videos to get um, to the knowledge and the teaching method that suits you. So I'm going to be attempting to teach you different methods, um, explaining it in different ways and everything you need to know so that when you pick up a pattern you can get straight into it. If you like this video please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell and make sure the settings are on all videos so that um, you don't miss any content that I make and you can follow along every video so you can become an expert knitter. I also stream on Twitch three times a week, uh, Monday 6pm, Tuesday 11am and Thursday 6pm. I hold a knit and natter where I knit and natter with you guys and just hang out. You guys have opportunities to interact with me um, and it's a lot of fun. So please check me out, the link will be in the description. Also I have a Patreon, so the link will also be in the description. Um, and go over there from £3 you can get early access to videos, access to my uh, patron only discord um, and loads of other perks including free patterns so please do go check me out I'd really appreciate any support you guys can give me. In this video, the first video, I will be talking about yarn. Anything and everything yarn. Um, I did a whole day's research Yes, an entire day, so you don't have to. So I've gone through, and this video will include talking about the different fibres, so there's three different classifications of fibres, um, with loads of different subtypes of fibres, um, different yarn weights, and then I will sprinkle in some fun facts and give you my recommendations for what you should be using for your first few projects. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Before I get straight into it, I will warn you this is going to be a very, very long video. So what I've done is I've put up the timestamps somewhere around my head. Um, feel free to pause the video and go to the section of which you actually want information for because there's a lot of information and you may need to go back and look at different aspects of this. So please feel free to pause this on my lovely face <laughs> and choose the timestamp that you want. Before we start, if you do have any questions or comments, please do leave them in the comments section down below. I will be replying to all the comments. Next week's video will be about needles and knitting accessories and I'll be going through all the different random set accessories that you will see and you won't understand um, and then hopefully you can see what you actually need to get started knitting and what comes later. So yarn. There's so many different types of yarn out there and it can be intimidating to know which yarn to use for which projects. If you are following a pattern they'll generally recommend different types of yarn to you, however some projects that you just find free patterns online or YouTube videos they won't always tell you what yarn to use that's best for that project or for you in your level of knitting. So I'm here to help you understand yarn. Yarn is so exciting, you have so many different textures and colours and different self-striping yarn and novelty yarns and they can inspire projects. Um, I've looked at yarn in the store, had no idea what I wanted to knit with it but I bought it and now I've you know, made something beautiful with them. This hat included. There's so much to choose from nowadays, so many indie dyers doing so many beautiful things so here I'm going to try and explain to you different yarn fibres um, starting off. So. Yarn fibres are the actual material 
that the yarn is. Um, so we have three different types of fib fibres. You have animal fibres, you have plant fibres, and then you have synthetic fibres. So those are the three main parts, each have their merits, and that's what I'm gonna go through now. So the most common one um, that we all know in animal fibres is wool. Wool comes from sheep, it is warm, it is very common, it is durable, it blocks well. However, it can be itchy, um, which can be a problem if you have sensitive skin like I do. I suffer with eczema sometimes. Um, and so wool is not great for me, but it's a very common one that you'll find. Um, and you know, if you don't have sensitive skin, maybe that's not an issue to you. When you hear wool, you may hear loads of different types of wool. For example, Icelandic wool, um, Shetland wool, Angora wool. That just explains either the location of where that sheep was or kind of the animal or the subtype of sheep that it came from. So don't be too intimidated. If you see wool, more than likely it's from a sheep, um, with the exception of a few things. Washable wool that you can chuck in the washing machine is chemically treated to get rid of the fuzziness outside. Um, so that's not very great for the environment. Organic wool is better because it does not have this harsh chemical treating um, or electronical treating um, to it. So if you are conscious of the environment, which I hope you are, um, that is probably a better choice for you. Wool is very versatile, it's um, suitable for summer projects, it's suitable for winter projects, depending on which type of wool you have. There are four main types, wool type fine, wool type medium, wool type long, wool type double. Um, so they can be used in either winter projects or summer projects, whichever you prefer. Fun fact about wool. Um, it has fire extinguishing properties, which is why you see in fire blankets, there is wool in it. Fun fact. Another pretty common type of animal fibre is merino wool. So merino wool is from a specific breed of sheep. Um, and what's important about this wool is it is not itchy um, and doesn't have the allergenic properties that normal wool has. So the fibre is a lot more soft um, and so it's better for people who do have sensitive skin like me. Merino wool does block well just like normal wool however it can pill which is a word I just discovered um, basically meaning that the little bobbles that you get when you wear things I'll put a picture somewhere on screen um, after a while after a few washes and after friction you get those little bobbles so merino wool can and has been known to pill. Merino wool is pretty common you see it quite a lot um, and fun fact, merino wool is very strong and durable. It can withstand being bent back on itself 20,000 times without breaking. So if you want a strong wool, guess merino is the way to go. Then we move on to alpaca wool, which is very, very, very soft. It's produced um, from alpacas, obviously, um, in South America. And it's good for small winter projects like hats and scarves and jumpers but it doesn't block too well. Um, I will go into blocking on a later video, but basically once you knit something, sometimes it curls up, um, blocking it lays it flat. Um, it doesn't block and take the shape you want it to too well. So you need to consider that when using alpaca wool. Fun fact, alpaca wool is water repellent. So if you live in rainy Britain like me, you might consider alpaca wool. Hi everyone, um, I'm just editing this video and I do just want to clarify in case anyone gets the wrong idea, they have water repellent properties, it's not completely water repellent so you can't go out in the rain and not have it all soak up, it still will but it's just more water repellent than other animal fibres. Then we move on to cashmere which is something I'm sure we've all heard about, um, it comes from goats, which is why it is so very expensive because goats only shed their undercoat once a year um, and you can't shear the goats, you have to like brush them and collect the wool. So it's very time consuming to um, get that wool. So very expensive. Cashmere wool is very, very fluffy, but it's not very strong. So I wouldn't recommend cashmere to beginner knitters because you may have tension too tight and you don't wanna be ripping any yarn whilst knitting because that would be horrendous. Also goats only produce a small amount of wool per shedding. Um, I think it takes four goats to make one cashmere jumper so very expensive. Fun fact cashmere fibre is six times smaller 
than human hair, which is why it's so fine and very cool. Next we have silk. I couldn't find loads of information about silk, so I don't know what animal it comes from. Hi everyone, this is future editing Charlotte here. Um, what I should have done is I really should have done a bit more research into silk because what I have found is that it is not vegan and I really should have known that beforehand um, but just a caveat to say that if you are a vegan um, generally don't use silk. It comes from moth caterpillars um, and it's from the cocoon that they spin for themselves. The method of obtaining this wool I do not agree with and therefore I will not be using silk. However, there is no however. I'm not going to be using silk. Um, and once I've, now that I've looked this up, I can't condone the use of silk, but I'm going to leave this in here just because people need to know about these things um, and people can make their own informed decisions. So yeah, thanks. Enjoy the rest of the video. But I know that it can be reeled or spun. It's very, 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 very expensive, but very nice, shiny and strong. This is best for summer garments, like pretty um, frilly tops or like thinner clothes, t-shirts, and it's very shiny. However, it can be quite slippery. So knitting with it might be difficult if you don't have um, a lot of confidence in your knitting abilities. Fun fact, silk is the strongest natural fiber known to humans. Finally, we're going to be talking about mohair. Mohair is very soft. It comes from the Angora goat very cute um not to be confused with the angora rabbit um that angora rabbit makes wool mohair is very good because it's very insulating but also water evaporates off it very quickly it's a very good all-rounder it's quite expensive and they come generally in 50 gram skeins so maybe not if you have a budget for your yarn fun fact it's very good for yarn dyeing because it takes on um colors very well Next we move on to plant fibres. Now plant fibres, not something you generally think of when you think of yarn. Uh, one that you guys probably all know is cotton, but there are three plant fibres that I could find um, on the internet that are quite or semi common. So first we're going to talk about cotton. So cotton is grown in warmer climates. It's very strong and very rigid so it doesn't block too well and also if there are any issues in the tension of your knitting um, which is how tight you knit the stitches um, or any issues like that it will be highlighted very well it's not a very forgiving yarn so i would avoid that unless you're very comfortable um, with your ability to keep consistent tension however cotton is light and breathable and once you are better at knitting they would be very good for summer garments but because they are so strong they also can work well as pot holders um, so you don't burn your hands or dishcloths fun fact about cotton is cotton can absorb up to 27 times its own body weight in water which is why it's so good as a dishcloth next one that i didn't personally know of is hemp hemp is you can knit with hemp um, which is very good um, environmentally it is a natural fiber and although um, hemp is quite n known to be quite a scratchy material it's quite soft to the touch and it gives great stitch definition um, hemp is more commonly used in macrame so tying up knots and making displays with macrame but if you did want um, to knit with it they're quite good for kind of heavy duty items so boot socks um, outer coats and scrubbies Fun fact, hemp plants can produce up to 250% the fibre of a cotton plant. So definitely more of an environmental option to go with hemp. Another one that I had never heard of before is bamboo. There is such thing as bamboo yarn. It's been said to wear well and has been said to have antibacterial properties. There isn't much information because it's not one of the most common types of yarn and I don't think too many people use it. So I couldn't find too much on bamboo. But fun fact, when spun into yarn, bamboo fibers can be softer than silk. Now we're gonna move on to synthetic yarns. Um, and these yarns, generally are cheaper because they're man-made so the first type um and a type that i've used quite a lot of personally while learning to knit um is acrylic yarn one of the reasons why acrylic yarn although is not as um, environmentally friendly or kind of as soft as animal fibers um is because it is so durable it's quite cheap um generally you can just chuck it in the washing machine and it's colour fast, meaning the colours don't run or fade quickly. 
and it doesn't require much experience to be able to use it. Um, also, it blocks really well. However, it can be pretty itchy. Generally with yarns, you may have a mixture. You can have acrylic and wool, which is what this hat is, and other yarns can be mixed and molded together. Um, you also get novelty yarns, which um, there are so many different types. You get furry yarn, you can get bobbly yarn, you can get yarn with little loops everywhere that looks really complicated to knit with. Um, I will do some videos on how to knit with different novelty yarns, so uh, look out for that. Mostly novelty yarns are synthetic polyester um, and generally can be a mix with other wools. Um, and they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun to knit with and the projects that you can make from them. I know quite a few people on my Instagram who knit with so many different novelty yarns and it all looks so amazing. So watch out for my video with novelty yarn. So as you can tell, there are so many different fibers so many choices, who knows what to choose. As a beginner, I would recommend that you consider what you want to first knit. So if you want to knit a jumper first, maybe you want it to be a bit more warm for the winter. And so you would then go and look at what fibers are warmer. So maybe a wool or an alpaca, um, they're quite warm. Or if you want something that you can wear all year round, maybe cotton is the best idea for you because it's quite, it can be breezy, it can be quite warm. If you're feeling more confident in your knitting abilities and you want a nice shimmery summer top, maybe choose a silk. Um, it's really up to you. Explore wool as much as you can and as much as you want to. It's so much fun to find different types of wool and different projects. Like I said earlier, looking at wool can inspire me. So yeah, just give it a go, see what's about there. Um, I'll let you know my recommendation for beginners at the end of the video, so stick around for that. To yarn weights which is the actual like thickness of the yarn that you're using um i don't have all the types of yarn so i will be putting in images of the different thicknesses of yarn just so you can have an understanding and then a picture of them all together so you can understand how they differ um so when you're looking at a pattern or a project that you want to do there will be a recommended yarn size and sometimes they'll have modifications if you want to go a size up to make it thicker or a size down to make it thinner uh, but generally, if you want to yield the same results, you should get the same thickness um, of yarn that they recommend in their pattern. Please do note that different yarn thicknesses are known differently across the world. So Australia, US and the UK, for example, have different um, classifications of thicknesses. So I'll be discussing those um, and then giving you all of their names in those three countries. In a later video, I will explain gauge a lot better, but what I'm gonna tell you about gauge now is you will be given a gauge in a pattern and that's how many stitches per how many inches. So if you decide that they suggest one weight of wool, but you kind of want it a bit thicker so it's less um, see-through, then you can go up, but you need to make sure that the gauge matches that gauge so you get the same size and there's no issues there. Now I do want to say that I'm going to be starting off on lace weight yarn that is thread and gossier, 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 I'm not sure um, which it is but they're not typically used for standard knitting I don't imagine beginner knitters are going to want to knit uh, doilies or anything so I'm going to skip over those and say that the thinnest one is lace weight yarn. So lace weight yarn is lace in the US, one ply in the UK and two ply in Australia. Uh, this yarn is generally used for light airy kind of shawls or you can make doilies with it. And generally it's knit with larger needles than recommended um, to get the bigger holes in it. However, the recommended needles for a kind of uniform stitch pattern, this is 1.5 to 2.25 millimeter needles. In the US, I struggled to find what size 1.5 needles is so i'm just going to say a zero to one size us needles the gauge for four inches of lace weight is 33 to 40 stitches next is fingering weight yarn also known as super fine yarn in the us um two ply in the uk and three ply in australia this is also used for shawls but is slightly thicker than lace weight yarn you also can use it for socks or lighter um weight jumpers. Again, a lot of times they use bigger needles to make it more light and airy if you want to wear it in the summer, um, but the recommended needle size for these is 2.25 to 3.5 millimeter needles, which is a US 1 to 4. The gauge for fingering weight is 27 to 32 stitches. 
Next up is sport or can be also known as baby yarn. It can also be known as fine yarn in the US, four ply in the UK, five ply in Australia. Sport weight yarn is twice as thick as fingering weight yarn and is commonly used for socks but can also be used to make hats and gloves and some baby clothes, um, hence baby yarn. The recommended needle size is 3.25 to 4.5 millimetres, which is a size 3 to size 7 US needles. And the gauge for sport weight yarn is 23 to 26 stitches. Next, a very common one that I have used um, and is quite common in a lot of other things that I knit is DK yarn, which stands for double knitting and that is used in both the US and the UK. Um, it can also be known as light yarn in the US and in Australia it is 8 ply. This is similar to sport weight yarn um, and it can also be known as a light worsted weight yarn in America and uh, the UK. Very common for socks, summer clothes and very popular for knitters of all levels because it gives really good definition between each stitches you can do different fun cabling on it obviously this isn't the only weight of yarn that you can do cables on but it's the first yarn that really gives you bigger stitch definition generally um, i've knit scarves and tops and jumpers with dk weight yarn and the recommended needle size is 4.5 to 5.5 millimeters or size 7 to 9 US size. The gauge for DK is generally 21 to 24 stitches. Then we move on to worsted weight in the US slash Aran in the UK slash Temply in Australia. Just a quick note, worsted weight yarn is slightly thinner, um, ever so slightly thinner than Aran yarn in the UK, but both are approximately equivalent to Temply Australian yarn. Aran slash worsted is probably one of the most common yarn weights for beginners to start with. It's very easily accessible, it's not massively expensive depending on what fibre you get it from. They can come in giant balls um, a lot of, it's a lot of what I personally have used learning to knit. I've used a lot of Aran weight in 400 gram balls which are very big considering mohair and other kind of balls that have come in 50 gram balls. There have been times where I've substituted DK projects with Aran yarn, although there is a difference between them, I'm very comfortable in substituting it. I'm very happy with Aran yarn, it knits up a lot quicker than smaller weight yarns, which is really nice. So I've made some shorts and a bralette out of Aran yarn and I've had no issues with that. The recommended needles are 5.5 to 6.5 millimetres and the gauge is 16 to 20 stitches. Next up is bulky in the US, chunky in the UK, or 12 ply in Australia. This again is something that my friends who have learnt to knit recently, they started with chunky wool um, just because it knits up really quick um, and it's a bit easier to get the grips of it with bigger needles and bigger wool. Um, it's very good for making big chunky scarves or big chunky jumpers but they're not very good for kind of intricate patterns. It's not very good if you have an intricate lace detailing. I would go for a thinner yarn than chunky. A lot of people say that you can't really do hats with chunky yarn, but I personally have made hats from chunky yarn and these seem to be okay. Um, obviously they keep your head very warm, so it might be good for someone with less hair than me, but I quite enjoy it. I don't think there are too many rules you should follow with yarn, but if you want better stitch definition, then I would go for a smaller yarn and avoid chunky. But if you want something that works up quick and easy, chunky is your go-to. Um, one word of caution, um, there is no real parameters to go by with chunky. So some shops sell chunky yarn and it's closer to Aran weight, some sell chunky and it's closer to super chunky. There's no defined definition of what constitutes chunky yarn. So if you were to buy chunky yarn, I would recommend going to your craft store. I'd recommend going to your craft store anyway because it's so much fun to feel all the yarns and go through and see everything in bright colours. Um, but go to your yarn store and I wouldn't buy chunky online unless you're very confident and comfortable with the brand that you're buying from. With that in mind, the recommended needle size is 5.5 to 8 millimetre needles and the gauge is 12 to 15 stitches, so under half the stitches of lace weight. Then we go on to Super Bulky, Super Chunky UK and 14 by Australia. As mentioned before, really thick, um, knits up really quickly. Again, I wouldn't buy it online, I'd go to your local craft or yarn store just to check it out if you're looking for a really chunky project. Generally recommended needles is 9mm plus 
um, which is size 13 flask in the US and the gauge for that is 6 to 11 stitches. Then we have jumbo yarn which is this kind of I guess novelty yarn that you're seeing with people who are making those giant blankets with arm knitting or like big scarves. They're quite new and kind of simple to get the hang of, not really knitting per se, um, but you can get giant knitting needles and knit with them that way. Um, and generally you get six or fewer stitches in that gauge. And they don't have a recommended needle size because most people use their arms. <laughs> so arm size. <laughs> so my recommendations. I know in this video I gave you so much information and although I did intertwine some hints and tips and recommendations and fun facts, you probably are feeling as exhausted as I felt when I was looking at all this information. So first off, I want to say your first piece of knitting is not going to be pretty at all. Your first piece of knitting is going to be ugly. And if it's not, and it's perfect, and it's wonderful and amazing, oh my God, you are a knitting natural. You are born to knit, and you should pursue that for the rest of your life, because my first piece of knitting, I cast on 10 stitches. Um, I ended with 30, there were holes everywhere, it was wiggly, it was just not cute. I wish I still had that with me, but I think I was so angry at it that I threw it away. Um, slowly, it's taken a long time for me to get better at knitting, um, so I would recommend the yarn fibre that you use would be acrylic because it's cheap and you can get a lot of it for a lower price so it's good for practice because you're gonna need it. <laughs> um, again I would recommend Aran weight yarn. You can use chunky that's totally fine if you just want to learn to learn the knit stitch and make a simple knit stitch scarf. Go chunky, go super chunky, get the big needles that might be easier for you to get to grips with, learning the motions of it, and then going to something a bit smaller and fiddlier, um, like Aran yarn. But I learned to use, um, I think I used, learned with DK um, and four millimeter needles, which were quite small and it was quite fiddly. So I'd recommend six to 6.5 millimeter needles, Aran weight yarn, acrylic. The yarn is easy to work with, it blocks well, um, so you can see what it looks like in a finished product nicely. Um, although it may not be the most enjoyable thing to wear, it will be hand knit, it will be your own, and slowly as you get better then I would move on to different animal fibres that may be more expensive. Um, silk, if you're feeling really confident, um, go down in the yarn weights and just play around with it and see what different skills you can learn. Also with acrylic yarn, you can start to learn to knit as a few of my friends have. Realise it's really not for you and you've not spent a load of money on cashmere wool that's going to go to waste and it's going to taunt you for the rest of your life. So go acrylic. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. Uh, next week, as I said, I will be talking about knitting needles. Um, so getting you ready for two weeks time where we talk about casting on actually knitting oh my god if you have any questions like i said earlier please do put them down in the comments please like and subscribe this video it helps me out a lot and do click the notification bell make sure it's on all videos um so then you don't miss any videos from me i do have a patreon please do go check that out and um, there's a load of different benefits that you can get from that starting from behind the scenes info with me leading all the way to free patterns um upon release as i am an aspiring knitwear designer so follow me on instagram if you want to see what project i'm working on at the moment um it's at michael goes knitting all the links will be in the description i will be uploading every wednesday evening or Monday if you're on my Patreon and you get early access to videos. I stream on Twitch three times a week, uh, Monday 6pm, Tuesday 11am, Thursday 6pm British Summer Time. Please go follow me and subscribe over there because that really helps and we can hang out and have a proper conversation rather than me just talking to my phone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next week. Stay wholesome! A pair of jeans, a shirt or two